Welcome back. This is, we're nearing the final installment. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to talk about C strings. We already know about uh, strings that come with C++ because we've been using string variables all along for things like names and other, other uh, data that consist of characters. We've also learned that we can read strings that have spaces in them. Let's compare the two. A C++ string just looks like declaring an integer, whereas a C string is special. The word that you use is not string at all. It says character, give a variable name, which is the string name, followed by square brackets, inside of which you would put a number. And this number indicates the limit on the size of the string that the variable can hold. So if I say character s and put in brackets 40, it means I can, I can hold 39 characters. The capacity of the string is really just one less than the number that you see here. Whereas with a C++ string, there is no notion of a maximum length. Right. There are a lot of similarities between a C string and a C++ string, particularly when it comes to I.O. The uh, extraction operator greater greater and the insertion operator less less work the same for both strings. Here are some differences. For C strings, there is an assignment operator. We can say name equals double quote Ed space Jones double quote semicolon. We cannot do that for C strings. We also have the ability to do get line, but the way we write the get line function is different between a C string and a C string. And one of the reasons is the get line in, in the C string has to take into account what the limits are on the size of the string. So, for example, if I were to read the variable s that we declared up here, the get line statement takes the form cn.getLine, and the first argument you put is the variable s. The second thing is information about the, 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 the maximum number of characters that can go into the string, plus one. Here's what a C string looks like. We declare it um, and with this we're saying we want five spaces in which to hold the value. And we're going to fill these spaces in left to right. The first character goes here, the second character goes here, the third character goes here. Here is the end of the string. Where the end of the string occurs, there's a special character that is placed in the string. There's a special character, and this character is uh, really written as backslash zero. It's called the null character. And think about it, it just marks the end of the string. Notice that this string really had room for one more character. We declared it to hold five bytes. One byte is always used here. All right. Now how do we do input? With a C string, again to declare a C string, we, the first word is not the word string, but care, followed by a variable name, followed by square brackets where you just establish the size of the string. To read a value is the same as reading a, a C++ string. No, reminder, greater greater says whatever we read cannot contain any spaces. If we want to read a whole line, the format is cn.getLine, the string, and basically you want to put what you had up here as the, as the limit of the string. When you declare a C string, 
you can initialize it the same way you can initialize a string by putting an equal sign and a string value. What you cannot do is if month is a C string, I cannot say month is equal to August. Instead, because think about it, the equal sign is called the assignment operator. Remember we learned for input that you get work done either by having an operator to do it or you must use a function. So for the C string, there is no operator. Instead, there is a function. The name of the function is string copy. If you look at it closely, it looks like an assignment statement because it has two parts. One part is the variable that you want to give a value to, the same as you see on the left-hand side here. The second part is the value that you want to assign. Notice that this can be a value or it can be a variable here. So in this case, we want to assign the value August, the word August, to the month. And notice that this is a function. You know something is a function when it's a name followed by parentheses. It's a function. It means that this will do some work for us. And the work that it will do is equivalent to the assignment statement. Okay, let's talk some more about operators that exist with string. We have an equal sign. We have an assignment operator. We have a concatenation operator, which joins two strings. So that if string one is hot, the other is dog, S1 plus S2 means the string one followed by the string that is formed when you take string one and stick string two on the end of it. And finally, notice that we have a, a combined operator here where we have plus equal. When we're dealing with C++ strings, plus means don't add numbers, but append two strings together. So I'm updating the um, I'm updating the variable called words, which was initialized to be tasty and space. And I want to add to it. I update it by putting the value of food on the end. What's food? Up here we say string food is this, which is hot dog. So the result of this statement is that the variable words now has the value tasty hot dog. Now how many believe you can take all of this and put it into our program and run it to see that it really works the way we said. All right. Now let's talk about how we can accomplish some of the same things using C strings. Reminder, C string does not have operators. Instead, it has functions. All right. There is no plus operator, but there is a plus equal operator which says update string one by putting string two on the end of it. So we're going to uh, see how this works. All right. So we have two C strings, fat space and cat period. And we're going to build a new string. We're going to update the value of S1 by pasting the word cats period onto the end of it. So let's see what happens when we do that. Here's the code for that. It's called chap3c. We're going to get out. We're going to compile it. And we're going to run it. What do we expect? Well, we expect to output the initial value of S1, which is fat space. Then we're going to modify S1 by putting the word cat on the end of it. And so when we print it the next time, we expect to see fat space cat period. So let's take a look. So we have fat followed by fat cat. All right. 
Uh, there, there are some additional C++ functions that we need to be aware of, especially as we deal with files. There are two, really. The first function is the function that tells you how long a C++ string is. And the function uh, is what we call a dot function. We'll explain that later, which uh, means that I can take the name of my string follow it by dot function and I'm basically asking questions about this variable. So name dot linked says give me the name the length of the variable name. It's an expression that returns an integer. So um, if I want so I can output the length of name and here's name one two three four five six seven eight nine it has nine characters in it. <clears throat> Another function that's extremely useful when we deal with files is converting a C++ string into a C string. And the way we do that is a function called C underscore string. Notice that it's a function because this must be followed by two, an open paren, close paren. All right. And the C strings have other functions too. They have functions to determine the length of a string. And I forgot to tell you, but all the C string functions begin with three letters, STR. So STR says, give me the length of the C string S1. And what does length mean? Length means how many characters are currently in the string. So if the value of S1 is fat space, then there are four characters in there. Okay. And I think that's all.